Hi, welcome back to Pia Tech Talk. In this episode, we're going to take an ST development board. Uh, we're going to use a nuclear board and we're going to change the built-in ST-Link uh, debugger to a Segur J-Link debugger instead. So tag along. So if you have an ST board, uh, you have always a debugger built in on the boards. Uh, this is a discovery board, that is one version to look into it. And that you have the nuclear board, and here you have the debugger on a breakout, that you actually can break the pins here. And there are other boards more dedicated as well, you always have a uh, debugger uh, section here. And in this microcontroller there, and here and there. That is actually a debugger and uh, ST is delivering this with a firmware that emulates then an ST-Link debugger for you. But you're not stuck with using that. You can actually transform that into a Sega J-Link interface instead. And why should you do that? Well, it could be that when you make your own board and you use your own development boards and uh, then you have your own debuggerment tool, and that is maybe Sega, and you would like to have uh, the debugging when you make your developments on the development boards, and then to be uh, aligned with your uh, own boards in the future. So that could be one thing. So we're going to look into how we can transform this ST-Link into Sega um, software instead. So to do that, we go to Sega.com, and I will put this link in the description for you. And on the top, uh, there is something says here, uh, getting started with the ST-Link on board, terms of use, compatible evaluation boards, and uh, how we also can go back to ST-Link on the development boards if we so choose. So this is not a one-way street, you can actually reverse it back to what you had before. So it says getting started with ST-Link on board. So there is some few steps that you need to take, take a look on. So first of all, you need to make sure that the USB drivers are installed and there is a download uh, link for that. I have them installed, so I won't do that. And then there is also a link, make sure that the J-Link software package uh, version 5.12 or later is installed. Uh, I have it installed, but I'm not sure if I have the latest one, so I hit, click on download. So then we come to this page and uh, I'm running on Windows. So we go for the latest version. You have all the versions here. If you want to, for some reason, take another version, uh, you go with the installer and we download that. We need to accept the terms and condition and software download. And we're finished. So we can go back. So now we have made this step. Make sure that it's installed. Uh, we click on that link and we get to the ST-Link reflash utility. And it says converts ST-Link to an onboard J-Link uh, onboard debugger. And here we can see what version we have. And uh, there is a download. So now it's unzipped, so now we can hit the ST-Link reflash. We get some text and it says down here, I hereby accept the terms provided by Segur. And it says here also, this utility enables you to replace the firmware of existing ST-Link on board with firmware from Sega. Uh, this is... Um, there is also a caveat on it that you are not allowed to use this to program your own boards uh, later on. You're only allowed to use it on the development board that uh, they, you have on your hand. So we can then accept. So now we accept it and now we can see also upgrade to J-Link, update J-Link firmware if there is already a firmware uh, from J-Link on it, or restore ST-Link. And I have a board, uh, the Nucleo G, 
uh, 71RB and there I have a USB cable connected to the debugger and it's running ST-Link currently. So I put number one upgrade to J-Link. And it says prefer identifying that it, there was actually an ST-Link that was a version 2.1. And there was a uh, uh, performing firmware update, and that was OK. So now we actually have a, a J-Link instead of an ST-Link. Uh, so that, that was the full procedure. Here we made a small Brinker program, and uh, we built the program. There were no errors. Uh, we hit the debug. Uh, we go for the debug tab and here it says ST-Link and uh, we just changed the debugger from ST-Link to J-Link. So we hit this one and we see now there is a Sega J-Link tab. So we select that one and we hit apply and OK. So we get to the uh, debug perspective and uh, we can now also take a look on the development board. There is the development board and there is no LED blinking at the moment. But if I now then hit the uh, run button, we see that the LED is blinking. So there is actually a Sega J-Link now. So we successfully managed to uh, transform an ST-Link nuclear board into a J-Link debugger instead. Uh, this gives you several benefits and uh, possibilities also to use like the Sega RTT viewer, which I will cover in the coming video, so stay tuned for that. There are some caveats and uh, there are potential risks that you could break your board. Uh, so do it on your own risk and look for compatible board. This board that I used today were not on the compatible list board. Uh, I'm aware of that. So there is some risk. Uh, do it on your own. Uh, hope you uh, learned something. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider to subscribe. I will really appreciate that. And until I see you next time, stay safe.